Great. I'm going to talk about health policy and budget policy, or you know, health policy is budget, budget policy, and budget policy is health policy. Um, this is sort of the agenda, the issues I want to go over, and I want to just quickly say how healthcare spending, sort of an overview of where we're spending money, how we're spending money, entitlements, health entitlements in the context of overall government spending. Focus on sort of these three programs: Medicare, the ACA, and Medicaid. Who and what they cover, how they're funded, how they pay how they interact, and you know, sometimes people are in more than one program or they've changed between programs. And then in the mix of that, sort of challenges of making projections and analyses, why healthcare is different than other entitlements in a lot of ways. Uh, and then how and why healthcare is changing, which is partly why making those projections is so difficult. Changes making spending projections, right? Now this is one of my favorite stupid slides, because the middle bullet, first bullet, is just so inane. The more things stay the same, the more they stay the same. Right? A lot of the budget projections and modeling is based upon assumptions of no legislation, no anything, nothing changes. It's a very simple way to model things. The reality in healthcare is the more things change, the harder it is to project or predict or model. And particularly when you're starting with a new program, Medicare Part D in 2006, uh, there was a little piece of legislation called the ACA that changed a whole lot of things. And modeling and projecting what was going to happen with that, or even just straight Medicare changes. Um, there's been a lot of controversy. I very wanted to take the slide out, but I like it. So I'm going to talk about it a little bit. Because this gets it sort of an uh, a allegory about how to think about making budget projections. You're in Georgetown on a rainy night. You drop your keys. Does anybody know the street light, the keys in this lamp? You drop your keys. And the only place you can look for it is where the street light is. Because if it's out in the dark area, you can't even see your keys. So the analogy is you can only make changes or understand or model based upon the data you have, which is that street light. If you make the light in the circle brighter, you can see the gravel better, but you still can't see anything outside, right? If you make the circle light bigger, you can find your keys. You think, oh, I've got it figured out now. But you still don't have the full daylight to see everything that's going on. And this is one of the challenges. Healthcare is so complicated. There's all sorts of stuff that's happening going on that it's tough to see everything that's going on. And there may be all sorts of important things that elephant in the room, you're not really paying attention to, or don't even know it's there. And it's one of my issues about, everybody's talking about big data is going to solve all our problems. Big data may be, make that light more intense. You can see the gravel better. You can see it sooner. But if, if you don't know what's out there to collect data on or how important it is, it's not going to really help you make modeling that much better. So this is a, sort of an interlude here, because I, I know my opening slide is so going to talk about it at the end, but I'm going to talk about it now. Um, these are changing baselines for what Medicare spending per capita was going to be like. This is the baseline from August 2000. Basically, each of these lines is another year. This is 2006. So in, for 2014, it was projected in 2006 that Medicare spending was going to be about $14,000 per person. Almost every year, the ba that baseline, boom, 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 kept dropping. So that the 2014 baseline, which is this dark line, it's not on $11,000. So it's like a $4,000 difference here in just projection. Some of that's related to legislation, but some of that's just like the projections were wrong. And not because anybody was a bad economist. You know, it's just it's hard to predict changing the world. Um, this is a similar one for Medicare Part D. This is the original scoring in 2006 for the Medicare uh, prescription drug benefit. But why, why would it go like, man, from four years in 97 to 10 to 16 to 25, 28 years? What do you think was going on? What, what are the one of the things, let me just back a slide, that can uh, affect sort of the solvency of the trust fund? The baby boomers hit their peak earning years. Yeah, so that would cause what to happen? Uh, more FICA taxes to go into the trust fund. So the rev increased revenue. I skipped over it, but in 97 there was the BBA, the budget uh, balance, budget. balance budget, thank you Barry, of 97. They keep changing the name and adding years. And it had all sorts of Medicare cuts to spending, and that drove up the solvency projection. Same thing happened with the ACA, went from 2010, went from eight years to 19 years and back down again. The President's budget proposal this year had all sorts of post cuts to Medicare. And some of them, for the effect the trust fund, it had some text about if all this stuff happened, we projected to expand the extend the trust fund solvency by like another 11 years. So all these projections about oh the trust fund's going insolvent, 
It's only going insolvent if nothing changes, and Congress passes legislation all the time. A lot of the ups have been related to legislation, because they're just, all these trust fund assumptions are that nothing changes. So this is an example about the uh, risk corridors. Um, and legislation, health policy, budget policy, politics. HHS, the risk corridors were a way to provide sort of reinsurance to the health insurance plans participating in the exchanges. Basically it said if they lose a lot of money, they would get most of that back. If they made a lot of money on the plans, they'd have to contribute back. It turns out most of the insurers lost a lot of money in the first year or two in the exchanges. HHS believed they had the authority to spend a lot of money, mandatory appropriations, to pay those plans that, that basically have risk insurance and make them near whole. In the budget bill a couple of years ago, um, Congress basically said and won this fight and said, no, that's not mandatory appropriations, that's regular appropriations. You can't spend any money on those risk corridor payments. So the agency just had some money they could spend, but it ended up meaning they got, the insurers got about 13 cents on the dollar. What that meant was there was 23, I think it was 23, these co-op plans, these plans are nonprofits that the, H, the ACA had funds and they gave them a lot of money to help set up basically new insurance companies. And setting up a new insurance company is a big deal, but 23 of these states, actually a couple of them were in like cross border. I think Maine, there was one in Maine that was Maine, New Hampshire, and a little bit of Massachusetts. Brand new insurance company, a lot of risk, a lot of uncertainty. About half of them went under <coughs> the first two years because they didn't get their reinsurance dollars. United Healthcare lost a whole bunch of money, and they're a huge insurer participating in the health plans and the exchanges. They're talking about not participating in 2017. Um, I've been told it's a real threat. They've got until like the middle of the year to actually make a, a final decision. But if with these co-ops dropping out, if United pulls out of all the exchanges. It presents some risk for the whole structure of the marketplaces in the ACA insurance reform structure. Um, I, I'm of the belief that it will work itself out, but we'll see.